I'm often asked by people, how do I do the fur? People are always coming up to me and they're saying, oh, fur's dead difficult. How do you get it to look shiny and fluffy? Well, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. I've got a finished picture here, but I'm going to show you how we get to that stage. But really, it's just three simple techniques. I've got my colours pre-mixed here. And I start, you can see I've already got the right side of the face done. This is all the same techniques I'm going to show you here. I start off with this warm brownie tone, just to get a base layer in. And I just brush the strokes in the direction that the fur is growing. You can get a couple of layers on, and that already begins to show some fluffiness. After that, I go into a darker layer. You can just see the edge of it here, where I left off before. And I have two or three shades of this mix. So I've got one here that I'm using now. It's a little bit on the ready side. I have another one that's a little bit darker. And my final shade, it's got a bit more Prussian blue in it, so it's a lot darker. This is where I'll use it for the deepest shadows. Now, this is acrylic, and it's often accused of being very difficult to blend. But the trick is to have your colours pre-mixed and work wet into wet. So now I'm picking up my highlight colour. This is the third step. You can see I've just got a tiny little bit on the brush, and I'm going to blend that in. Try not to overdo it, because if you do, it'll go flat. And I just work my way around the picture, adding in the dark colours, which I vary every couple of brushfuls, making sure I keep them going in the direction of the fur. And then before it dries, just popping in a little bit of highlight colour. You can vary the highlight colour as well. Where you want a brighter light, just make it slightly paler. This is a mixture of uh, Prussian blue and white and ultramarine and white. It's best to do a little bit at a time. Don't try and get all the dark colour on and then go back and put the highlights on because it will have dried and that's where the, the misguided impression that acrylics are awful to work with comes from. As long as you remember that you work wet in wet, everything will be fine. I should use a finer brush there, I was getting a bit carried away. So, let's be dark and go a little bit smaller. Picking up the highlight colour, Prussian blue, white, tiny little bit of the dark colour in it. A bit too much on my brush there. You don't want great gobs of paint when you're doing this. If you have a lot of the highlight colour on, you'll actually swamp the black, the dark colour, and it'll just get to be a mushy grey. Putting some smaller marks in around here. Now, if you leave it like that and move on to the next bit, it's very quickly going to dry and you're going to have a hideous lump there. But if you make sure you blend it in, and I'm using an on-off little flicky stroke there, I've been a little heavy-handed with the blue, the highlight. So I just go back to get my fur colour, add a bit more in, and there we go. We're getting a nice, soft little highlight. Keep stepping back from what you work when you're painting. Check how things are going. And if you feel your brush getting claggy, give it a rinse. You'll notice I'm not using much water at all here. The paint's quite fluid enough by itself is a bit too runny there now. Dry my brush off. Back to my darker colours. I tend to work from the edges of the animal, so these outer fluffy margins, so that I get a nice fluffy stroke on the outside. And with a flat brush, you can turn it on its edge like that and get nice little tiny flicks. You can also do them with a round brush. Whichever brush feels the comfiest for you. So, just moving on a little bit quickly, so I show you a bit more of this. 
You can see how quickly you can lay this on. If I had a bigger brush, I could whip it on really quick. So I just speed that up a little bit. You can see I'm working down the picture. And blending as I go. So if I want to bring up some more furry texture here, just pick up the edges of the tufts and then blend it back to the dark. If you need to add a bit more of the dark colour, just pop a bit more on. Got a nice little edge there, I like that bit. So you're just alternating between the two colours. And I'm aiming for just a small amount on the brush each time. I'm changing the angle of the strokes to fit in with the way that it's going around the face. The warm undercolour that I put on first with the burnt sienna, that shines through these darker layers and helps to give the depth. If you went in with just the burnt umber mixtures, it would look quite flat and quite cold. I've found over the years this is the best way for getting that, that sort of rich look that fur has. Because dark animals, whether it's a cat or a dog, a horse, they're not actually black. When you see them in good light, they tend to be various shades of brown. And that basically is it. I would carry on all the way down the portrait here, doing exactly the same thing, building the tufts of fur between the light colours and the dark. This side here has been done exactly the same, but I've used a much smaller brush. That side took me ooh, probably about four hours. So looking at the finished picture that I showed you before, you can see how I've just developed that technique further. That's the original parts here. The extra little highlights are just done by going back over, working in with slightly brighter highlights and, and finer brushes. It's that simple and it's really easy to do. So give it a go. Mm -hmm.